good. Okay. Excellent. All right, so uh, just to finish up the manual, we would strongly suggest that you start your work for each session by reading the manual. That's probably your, the most important first step is go to the manual and do your reading for the session. And I suggest, though you might do it differently, I like to do the work for each session at a time. So I start in the manual and read that session, and then I go on to the platform for that session. So if you'll just take a second to read through that slide, then I'll talk about the platform. As I talk about it, I'm gonna take a second and show the platform. The letters platform, what I love the most about it is the videos are in action. They really show what it looks like in the classroom so that you can get a feel for how you can bring that content into the classroom. So that's the, what I feel is the most important benefit of the platform. And hopefully most of you have had a chance to look at the platform by now. It's letters.voyagersopris.com and you can see mine there. You can see on the main page for each unit, they have by session. So again, I would read session one in the manual, then come and do session one here. And I'm just gonna work through the session and work through all of the different parts. And it kind of tells you how long to take for each. One thing that I discovered is if there are multiple things on a page, which does happen sometimes, make sure that um, when you log back in, it didn't automatically advance you. For example, I found one time that I watched a video, but I didn't get to the activity. But when I logged back in, it already had a check. So if that happens too, if you didn't finish that page, just kind of go back and check that you were able to do both. But you're just going to work through the module for that session from top to bottom and a couple of things in there. Once you get down to the bridge to practice, that's where you're going to jump into the Canvas course that my friend will talk to you about. You'll look at the bridge. You can look at the bridge to practice here, but like my friend will talk about, you're, it's going to be easier for you to do it in Canvas. But then after you do the bridge to practice, you're gonna come back in and do the check for understanding. And that's the quiz. Now, just a couple of, notes about the quizzes um you get two chances and you don't have to master those for the stipend any questions about oh two more things about the platform you don't have to do the extension activity it's not required for the stipend and it's not required by the state if there's a topic that you'd really like to learn more about feel free to do the extension activity but you don't have to some of the sessions have a survey asking how you felt about the content. You also don't ever have to fill out that survey. If there's something you feel strongly about and you wanna give some, con uh, some feedback to them, feel free to do the survey, but you can also save yourself some time by noticing once I've done the check for understanding, I can go on to the next session. Any questions about the platform? Sarah? Nope, sorry, wrong button. <laughs> she was just gonna, you were gonna do a thumbs up, right? <laughs> okay. Okay, the next one is about the Canvas course. Hold on, I've gotta, so, I've gotta get back to that one, sorry. I was still showing the platform. Oh, sorry. No, it's my fault. There you go. <laughs> okay, so again, take a second and um, read through the slide bring it forward. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, so basically, after you finish your going through your platform work, like Leslie said, watching the videos, doing the, um, the work in the platform, the journaling, I think, is um, very helpful, but I don't think anybody really keeps track of what you say in there. Um, so you, you do that, and then when you get to that bridge to practice, 
it suggests that you download the worksheets. We suggest you don't do that and resist that and go to the Canvas page then because we have, actually Leslie, um, took those worksheets, put them on the slides in your Bridge to Practice in the Canvas course, and they are editable for you in there. So you can actually do that work once and it is reflected, it, it, it will ask you later, did you do it? And you can just in the platform say yes when you get to the very end of the unit. So your bridge to practice is this almost the exact same, although in some cases we have simplified what the bridge to practice is in our platform. Um, some of the things that are presented in letters, we have our own Canyon's way of assessing them. Um, so like our, our diagnostics in 95% or our CBM testing and the way we handle that, that is accomplishing um, a lot of what is suggested in the letters platform. So you are already doing that and it may look a little different. So we did kind of tailor the assignments so you're not duplicating work that letters would be asking you to do, but we know you already did that. Um, the other thing that's so critical about the bridge to practice is it really is a bridge. And as the graphic in the corner of the slide shows, it is the bridge between knowing something and doing something differently that is gonna impact your instruction in your classroom with your students. So we know that actually knowing it is good and then practicing doing it differently in a more improved research-based, evidence-based way is what's gonna really move the dial for your students on reading, writing, and spelling. So um, that's, that's what makes the difference. Um, so after you do the assignments in Canvas, you submit them and we are trying to go through them they have been amazing and I cannot tell you how, it is just a joyous experience going through them and seeing how enlightening you all are. So thank you for all your hard work. We really appreciate your, your thoughtfulness in completing the assignments. And um, so that, that's all, unless anybody has a question on the Canvas course itself. I would just add, if you have a question, feel free to turn on your uh, mic or put it in the chat. But I would just add, Lee and I are grading. And what we're really just looking for is uh, completeness of thought. So if you look at the rubric, as long as you reflect on it and put your thoughts in each of the questions, you're going to get 100%. Um, cause that's all we're looking for is that you thought about each area. You thought about what the weaknesses might be. You thought about the strengths might be, for example, on the first one. Um, and there's not really a right or wrong answer because based on your observation and your kiddos, there could be a big variety of answers. So we're not grading your thinking. We're grading that you, that you did the thinking. So that's the only question I've really seen about Canvas so far. Uh, does anybody have any other questions about Canvas? Okay. All right, assessments and mastery assessments. There is, as you saw when I showed the platform, for each session, there's the check for understanding. Almost every session, there are five questions. I will also say that most, all of the questions on the unit assessment come from the checks for understanding. So when you do your check for understanding, try to make sure you know the content, but nobody is looking to see uh, your percentages on the checks for understanding. So we would just suggest if you miss one, look to see that you have the right answer, but so that you know it for the unit assessment, but not to worry about getting 100% on those checks for understanding. Also, when they do appear on the unit assessment, they're pretty much word for word. So you take those at the end of each session. The mastery assessment, that's the, the assessment for the whole 
unit. So when you're done with all eight sessions for the unit, that one needs to be completed at mastery of 80%. So that one we encourage, and I think all of your principals and coaches have encouraged you to be on board to do it in a PLC and do it together. And we just did one with a few other coaches so that we kind of did it in a PLC. And one person took it and we walked through so that we could get the right answer. And then if we'd missed anything, uh, the second person could try it so that we all got our 100%. So that's what the mastery assessment is. At the end, it will give you a percentage for the unit that's based on your score on the unit assessment and the checks for understanding. But again, the end of unit score, except for on the unit score doesn't matter. The only thing that matters is the mastery assessment score. So just to make that clear in your head and we don't want you stressing over all of those checks for understanding. Any questions about the assessments or the mastery assessment? Checks for understanding or assessment? Anything you'd add, Lee? No, I think you covered it. Okay. All right, our face-to-face -face trainings. I'm gonna give you a second to just skim through that slide. So these are designed to be face-to-face -face in person, much like a lot of Canyons PD that they provide time for collaboration and discussion, which is really where a lot of us learn the material. And that's how it's designed to be. Because of COVID, Unit 1 will be um, the facilitator from letters will be virtual, but all of us will still be in a room because they will still stick to the planned design of providing time to collaborate and do activities and talk to each other. So when we're in a room together, we're going to be able to talk to our team. We're going to be able to talk to other CSD teachers about what that looks like in canyons. And then for our future units, that person will be able to travel and come and be live with us. So we will have all of your handouts. You will probably get a, an email from Midas that says, here's the webinar link and here's the links for your handouts. You do not need either of those, any of those, because again, you're just gonna show up here at the district office, either in the Canyons Center or the Peaks Room and we will have your handouts and we will have our presenter streaming with a facilitator from ISD to make sure that there's open communication between the facilitator and all of our participants. And then again, starting with unit two, that facilitator will be live with us. So that is what is happening with the face-to-face -face training. And if I could just add on to that, Les, mm -hmm. um, it is these face-to-face -face trainings are really fun days because you've done all the hard, heavy lifting before you come to these. And so these are an opportunity to really solidify your knowledge and think about your kiddos and how it applies to them. And they're, it's, it's really fun. And the presenters that I have been in contact with are so knowledgeable, it's a little scary. But, um, but they're just, they're lovely people and they, the information is wonderful. And I think you'll really enjoy the trainings. I did, anyway. We look forward to seeing some of you next week at our first face-to-face -face trainings. Yay! <laughs> Does anybody have any questions about the face-to-face? -face? Seeing none, we'll move on. <laughs> um, <laughs> So the last thing we're really going to talk more in depth about is coaching. So go ahead and take take 30 seconds or so to read through the coaching slide and then I'll talk about it for a second. Okay. Um, I think, I think the most important part of this slide is the why. Um, and I think that especially this year, more than any other year in my years of education, I feel busier and like I am running faster 
than ever before. And I'm sure nobody else around your building feels that way. But um, I think the coaching and the fact that it really does cause us to stop and reflect and think a little bit more deeply about our students and our own practice and be able to talk through and discuss things and the dialogue with a coach really allows us to discover things that maybe we wouldn't have had we just stayed on the treadmill and kept going. Um, so it, it does really allow the time and space for building your own capacity. Um, as you all know um, from having been, even if you're new to Canyons, you may have had a coach somewhere along the line in your life the coach is not there to judge or to, the coach is a, someone to talk with. They're kind of a thinking partner. Um, so each unit, because there's so much information, um, this is a critical piece. And so we want you to feel supported in your learning with a coach as your partner. So the K3 teachers, um, we do have the foundations checklist that we've been using um, from the map, it's been in the map for several years, and it is a compilation of the phonological awareness and phonics pieces that um, align with our foundations block in the literacy block in the map. Um, and for fourth and fifth grades, because they are not fully participating to the same degree that the state is requiring of the K-3 teachers, and that's an opt-in by certain schools based on their data. Um, their, their public practice may look a little different than the actual coaching cycle, but we want you to feel supported with your coach and to be able to learn with your coach. And they're going through it right along with us. And Leslie and I are going through the course right along with all of you. So it's, it's all of us are in this together. It's a group effort and we are just so honored to be part of learning with you. And we've learned a lot from you. Are there any questions about the coaching cycle? Okay. All right, we really we have a few minutes left for any other kinds of questions you came up with, but I'd just like to say a couple of thoughts and that's that for the most part, we want you to implement and think about your kids, but also to do it in the easiest way possible. So when it's saying try something new with your students, it doesn't necessarily for the bridge to practice, we don't necessarily want you to pull them out and try something one on one all the time. For example, when we get to unit two and we start doing learning more about phonology and different routines for phonemic awareness, you could just add a routine whole group as part of your ECRI lesson. And that would be more than uh, adequate implementation. And then just reflect on how that helped those kids out. So for the most part, for your practice, the implementation should be as easy as you can for the biggest impact. So again, let's bring your routine into your whole foundation's whole class. It could be bringing a routine into skills, uh, your skill-based group. It should not be, uh, for the most part, a big ask. There are a few times when it asks to do a little bit more, like think of what a whole phonics lesson would look like, but also you can do that. In, and we really want you to do this. Just what does it look like as you're already doing it? We don't want you to recreate the wheel. We want you to tweak and add to your practice with this new knowledge. So hopefully that's what letters is gonna be able to do for you is you have this group of kids that you know don't have all of their uh, phonic sounds down. What are some tools that you can do to help those kids get that? And just help you be able to respond to your kids needs in that way. And that's what we want you to get from letters. I love that. And I would only add on that um, you may be able to talk to your coach and principal about carving out some time and using some IPLC time as a grade level to decide what's a good routine that we all think would be good to try. Try it out in your classroom and then come back together and say, oh man, that was amazing. Or 
well, you know, for the most part went okay, but then this part was a little rough. So how did your guys' go? And I think that's, um, that's the benefit of having a team to work with and collaborate with. Awesome. All right, are there any questions you have that we didn't cover or ideas that have come up? 